Okay, good morning guys, Cliff here, and welcome back to the Mercury 4 free flight to RC conversion build. And we left it last time, we had fitted the battery box, the engine block, the tailplane bolts. Uh, so what I've done this morning is I've just punched out the side windows, as one was rubbish anyway, but I want to have access to the rubber band fit in for the center section, so I've removed the windows and I've got a cunning plan to put them in temporarily, so that's all got to be designed out yet. But what I want to do this morning is to make up the cowl. Um, what I've done, I've photocopied the bit of the plan that's relevant. So I've got side view, top view, and front view. And the cowl curves in quite a lot. And I, I thought, well, the thickest bit of bolster I've got is half inch. Not bad, sort of medium weight, which is fine. And then I thought to myself, well, first thing is how, which way does should the grain go? Because it's going to be difficult to sand it side grain. So it'd be better if it was lengthwise. Okay, that's fine. But because it curves in more than half an inch and it also curves around the outside more than half an inch. So it's going to have to be sort of sectional. If I should sand through and have a hole, I can block it off on the inside and keep sanding. But... Uh, it's not quite as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. Uh, so uh, my other option is not to make it out of balsa, but to carve it out of a block of foam or something and fiberglass it all up. I've done that in the past, but I rather, you know, but I really fancy doing it out of balsa wood, to be honest, um, because it's a balsa wood aeroplane that requires a bit of respect for its age. Oh, the other thing I've done, I've sort of buffed up the front window a little bit. It's still a bit grubby, but I think I'm going to leave it. It's sort of part of the character of the plane. So, how am I going to tackle this cowling? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. All I can think is I'm going to sort of cut it. If I cut it to, to the shape of the plan, then... It doesn't quite follow because it goes around in a bit of a curve. It's pretty much straight to the fuselage side, then curves around sort of where the motor is a bit. Mark Robinson, I don't know if you've seen his video, he's, he's got one of these motors, or engines I should say. He's just run one up. It's a super cyclone from 1946, I think. Um, sounds fantastic and he, and he said, come on now Cliff, you've got to put one of these in this model. No, I, I haven't really, I, it's just, um, it's just, it would be fun to do, but it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Um, very much so. So, no, I'm not going to do it. I'd love to see one with it. I did suggest to him, actually, I could, uh, what well, could he pinch the soundtrack of his going and if, get one of these sound card boards and have the sound, at least, of the model, which would be cool. But again, it's not real, is it? So... I'm not really one for that sort of thing, so I think I'll stick with electric motor. Okay, so anyway, digress. Um, I'll probably cut all that out. All that waffle, I'll remove. So how am I gonna do this? I don't know. Let's tap the wood and think about it. Um, I suppose I could cut the shape out of the side, uh, angle the back of it a little bit to let's get a rule on there a minute. Rule, sir. Let's bench it down. Hopefully you can see the focal length on this new camera is a smaller. Anyway, um, that has to be like that. I think it's going to be a case of just sort of making a start and seeing how you get on. Let's just turn this sideways a minute. Got to make maybe one there, one piece at the top. I can see where that takes me to. One piece there, one piece there, and then a couple of little bits on the bottom with each piece angled. Have to be very carefully sanded. So if I cut out the side view, I think what I'll do, 
I'll cut out the paper and lay it on and maybe cut out the piece. Let me cut the paper out for a start. Back in a minute. Okay, so I've marked up the front here roughly half an inch down and I've got where are we? So I've got a top plate, a side plate, diagonal, side plate flat, side another side plate diagonal and a flat plate on the bottom. Um, I'm thinking I'll maybe cut out the side plate here and get the angle right because what I plan to do is to sort of spot glue it in place and then break the glue joint afterwards after it's all sanded so yeah I think I'll start with this big one and then just fit the others in sanding and cutting and shaping as I go and glue it all together but say it does have to come down at more of an angle here so whether I put a saw cut in there to bring it around a bit might be a good idea so next time you see it guys I shall have some sort of construction on the way Just sawing off some of the major chunks here now, guys, and uh, then I can get the old uh, sanding block on it and see what we get. I'm gonna have to take it outside to sand it because there's gonna be sawdust everywhere. Ah, okay. It's a bit few minutes outside with the coarse sanding block and I've come up with a reasonable shape uh, it's only coarse of course lump there to come off but look at it and likewise on this side but now what I've got to do is to fill in the front and then I can start curving it around this bit's going to be quite interesting because it's tapered this way and tapered that way and I can't get that block in from the outside so I'm going to have to now detach the cowl from the uh, fuselage and do it all out inside with half inch wood again to give me some wood to take away. I found, um, let me show you this, found a plywood ring in my box which I'm going to stick on there. Instantly that looks uh, good doesn't it so all I've got to do is fill this bottom part in really up to there and uh, yeah it's coming along coming along there we are that was a major chunk done there's a nice oval air intake look on the front of here so I think it would be nice to replicate and then they've got bamboo it says bamboo probably bits bent around like in a curve which would be rather nice but or maybe I don't know we'll see see it looks rather nice but it's a decent air intake isn't it show you the inside there's the inside lots of bits But yeah, you know, it's, it's quite a few bits of wood there. Each, each piece of wood was um, tapered both this way and the, the slope. So each piece of wood took a little bit of fit in, but I think it looks pretty good. I say it does need uh, shaping a little bit more down to the contours. It's a little bit high here, maybe. Maybe not, doesn't look too bad. So I can press on with the next piece now. Oh, the other thing I've done, look, I've cut a piece of cardboard 
which tidies up that dash. I might just paint that and stick that in over the top of that horrible mess because I can't afford to go too high with thickness. I was thinking of masking this off anyway to cover up the edge a bit but the windows cleaned up a little bit better than uh, it was before so there we are. So a quick dremel in and the hole is done. So I'm just thinking about retention maybe a, a little dowel top and bottom and then a couple of big magnets either side should do it or a couple of big magnets top and bottom and a little dowel either side. Ah, good morning guys, um, so I've been working on the fuselage a little bit, what I've done, it was recommended to me to paint the fuselage with this Ron Seal interior varnish, Goes, it's like milk to start and it dries clear, um, but it, it, it helps to bind together the planking, any gaps between the planking get sealed with varnish, um, so I've used that and now then I've put on some filler, some of this really soft, lightweight filler. It's all the same sort of stuff. And now I'm just gently sanding it. And then I'm going to put on another coat of the varnish. I mean, when I say a coat, it's, it's like water and it's sort of, <coughs> I've used hardly any at all on the entire structure. So it's, I'm not too concerned about any weight. So I'm just going to work my way around this. Taking off any high spots and just turning it around feeling as I go it's quite a big structure to do but I'm in no hurry and it's feeling very nice actually so I'm going to keep doing this for the next half hour or so and then I'll come back when it's all dry and we'll look at putting another coat on. One of the commenters this morning actually suggested that the fuselage, well, because I, I, uh, I'm going on about the, the, the quality of the construction. He said, you know, what person built this? you know, in such a bad way. And thinking about it, you know, I think that the repairs on this fuselage are so different to the standard of the quality of the original builder, but somebody else has had a go at it. I think this model could sort of be like 30 or 40 years old. And then somebody's had a go at repairing it maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and, and it's, not to the same quality so i think i'm probably the third person to have a go at this airplane which when you think about it is quite uh, quite exciting really but i'm the one cliff harvey is the one who got it into the air but i don't want to count the chickens and spurred on by mark robinson's tomboy senior video this morning um it looked fantastic in the air mark croucher did his launch and we're all getting into our vintage models. Well, because my Ajax is a vintage model, isn't it? Okay, anyway, I'm going to continue with this and I'll catch you back soon. If you're enjoying the video, guys, and you're not subscribed, just pop down and hit that little subscribe button now. It helps promote the channel. And more importantly, it helps promote the hobby. Also, I'd like to say a big thanks to my channel members who subscribe to me or support the channel financially. Um, thank you very much to you guys because it's your support which helps me to uh, put all this stuff together. So if you want to have a look at the join button if you're not a channel member, um, have a look, Price's monthly fee starts at one, only one pound a month. Just uh, working my way around the front end now guys, I've done the whole fuselage 
A couple of little areas I think I'll probably just do a little bit more on. But um, just work my way around the windscreen now. If you remember that was quite gobby, it still is actually. There's a couple of small areas I'm just going to put a little bit more filler on I think. Just because they, uh, I'm not being a perfectionist but they just kind of like annoy me. <laughs> Anyway, I'll carry on with this and um, I'll I'll come back to you. Uh, I've got something else to show you. I've got the cowl still to sand. That had one coat of the varnish. Um, I've had an idea about how I'm going to create the fins in the front as well overnight. So, yeah, good. See you in a minute. Okay, guys, welcome back. So... I've given some thought to uh, how am I going to <clears throat> fix the wing on and my solution was this piece of wood which I'm gluing in just there I'm fixing it with white glue but I'm also putting a small amount of CA on it just to oops just to hold it in place while it um, sets Right, so my plan is this. As you possibly know, the wing is retained, the centre section is retained by two hooks underneath the centre section and um, rubber bands which go down the big dowels inside. Um, I wasn't very keen with that idea, mainly because how am I going to fix, fix it on and stretch it down and the bands have to be tight enough to hold the wing down and yet slack enough to pull it up to get the bands on the hooks. Um, so what I thought was, I'll make the side windows here removable, then I just reach in, hook up the bands for maintenance. I mean, it'll be hooked up pretty much all the time, but at least I can get in there and check them, etc. So uh, what I've done is I've cut this shape out of plywood. I've inserted some magnets in the back that also serve to locate the back because they're thicker than the... Um, plywood so I've got rebate in the back so these are this will be um, fitted with celluloid on the inside so it'll be a separate unit so that's not quite set yet but anyway that'll just go under the front edge and snap into place and done so where am I with the fuselage well I've given it a sanding down and I've refill the little areas which are slightly below I just want to give it a second second chance to be level what's good about the sun shining through the window at the moment is it, it really highlights any defects any little shadows or high spots so I want to get this finished today while the sun's shining okay and then I'll give it a second coat of the uh, varnish and then that'll be the fuselage pretty much ready for primer Brilliant. Okay, so I've given it a, another sand and a, another coat of the Ron Seal varnish. Ron Seal, yeah. Varnish goes on like water. I've given the whole uh, body another coat and it's looking actually pretty good, I've got to say. Um, I've given my little window thing a varnish ready for paint probably and anyway the whole structure is given a, a coat of paint so apart from sticking in the dash once I've painted it black um, there's not much else to do on the fuselage for the time being oh I've got to stick those unply um, plates down on the inside for the front undercarriage legs apart from that and tidy up the edge of the window ledges which I've removed temporarily uh, so change those, add the bit of ply and uh, that'll be about it for the time being so thanks for watching um, now I think I'm going to tidy my desk and get on with possibly the elevators put this to one side or maybe go and shed, cut those bits of plywood down there maybe I'll do that first 
Uh, and yeah, it's coming on great. I love it. I was thinking of live streaming this afternoon, but uh, no good if I'm going out in the shed every so often. <sighs> really enjoying this build, guys. Hello, welcome back, guys. I've moved back onto the tailplane. I think it's a good idea if I have a go at the elevator. Now I've just drawn a straight line here. I reckon that this is about the size of the elevator I want. I was thinking of going to that corner. Then I thought, well, do you know what? It looks a little bit small. Then I thought it was going that bit. Well, it looks a little bit bigger. So I sort of split the difference. So I'm going halfway between there and there. So there. So I'm going to have elevators there. Uh, so how do you start? Well, I'm also going to end them here. So I've got to cut a, make another riblet to go there. And I'm going to end it here. So I need another riblet to end the elevator there. I'm going to build it all up. And then cut it through. Or shall I possibly cut it off and then build it? I'm going to hinge it on the uh, in the middle. If I hinge it in the middle, it makes life a bit easier actually for the hinges. So I've got to put something fairly decent on there, say quarter inch balsa on the both faces. And I need to cut this vertically and then I can bevel an edge on the leading edge of the tailplane for the hinge, sorry, leading edge of the elevator for the hinge. So therefore, I need to cut through each rib. Uh, might be an idea to, well, no, hang on a minute. I'm gonna use quarter inch, so let's find a bit of quarter inch, which is fairly stiff. Here's a lovely piece. That's quite, quite hard. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the cuts. I'm going to cut out and I'm going to glue in uh, some balsa wood. So let me do that and then I'll come back to you. I can pin it all down hard because it's got a slight upward twist to it. Um, let me come back to you when I've got something to show you. It's more interesting than me divvering about. I've decided I'm going to rebate um, the rib into halfway into the spar. It's going to make it really strong like it is at the back here so I'm just cutting out a quarter inch slot all the way down holding the blade vertically so now I've got a quarter inch slot Put it in that way. Might fit a little bit better that way. There we go. I've cut that to a taper all the way down, but look at that, that one is slightly slightly bigger than the other two. Why is that? Let's put the straight edge on it. That's the problem with old plans. Yeah, the rib is actually high. So I can I can safely sand that down to profile by doing that. See it rocks on that rib, so I can I can take that down. Um, so let's mark on there where the slots have to go. Working that there. So I just got to file those slots vertically. I think I've got a free 30 second balsa wood file which I made when I did the trailing edge so I just find that. I should just move it into there like that, like that, like that. OK, 
Okay, that's pretty good. Now hopefully there's enough room for that one to slip in down there beside it. That's good. Yep, yep, yep. All right, George, I think it's going to work. Look at that. <laughs> wow, I've impressed myself there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the plastic under it, lay it flat, and I'm just going to super glue it all in. That one's very slightly out of line, but hey. And then when that's glued in, I can sand it. Just got to make a rib to go in there, a rib to go in here, and then I can make the cut and it will break off. Obviously, I don't glue these two bits together. I put the riblets in each end and sanded them. So now I'm going to try and cut the elevator off so it's indented. So it's going to be cut from there down to there. There's probably a bit of glue on the rib next to it, which you'll want. So I'll have to sort of cut up the rib. That's it, that's gone. And this one here, I've got a very small gap between, which is useful. If you remember, I couldn't do this until I'd sanded the trailing edge completely to get a um, uniform easier to do it in one piece than trying to do it separately. Right, so that's cut through. Um, there's going to be glue attaching it here and there, so I'll just have to run the knife around just to free everything up. And I did make a slight uh, boo-boo insofar as I put glue I actually glued the end of this to the rib next to it, which I didn't uh, mean to do. So that will probably want a little bit of knifing, careful knifing. Let go. All right, okay, it's taken a little bit off there, but that's okay, because I've got a shout for that anyway. So there you have it, one elevator. I think that's a decent size. It's not too big, not too small. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to sand this top and bottom, put a bevel on it, and then that will move up and down. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one and carry on the good work. So catch you soon. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, guys. Um, so that's both elevators made. Next job is to work out the servo positions and get some hinges in and horns and everything. I'll have to take off the back edge here slightly to allow for the width of the hinges. Uh, but there we are. Quite happy with those. They went quite nicely. I wonder how they compare. Huh. <laughs> pretty close good I think they're a good size I think they should give it the model authority but just to remind you I'm going to have individual servos for each elevator elevators made so that's another job ticked off do you know what that is <laughs> no cliff what is it this is what I think they mean on the plan by this sort of fluted grill um, that fits in there like that. So you got that effect. I'll paint that contrasting colour to the bodywork and yeah it's quite solid, 16th balsa. Quite pleased with that. It looks pretty cool. Unless of course uh, a certain channel uh, member suggested that I should have made the slats so as I could close them. Thank you, Frederick. Great idea. But I think I'm going to need all the cooling I need, that I can get rather, so. Yeah, there it is. 
that's roughly what they got on the plan so that's what I've sort of made. 24 separate pieces in that. <laughs> oh Cliff, you must be mad spending all that time. Uh, it's taken me a couple of hours but you know you can't do enough for a classic aeroplane. If you're enjoying the video guys then uh, hit this subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed and it makes a big difference to the channel. It helps to spread the word of model aeroplanes and vents the hobby. And if you want to check out the join button as well, it starts from just one pound a month. Cheers guys.